so uh, this is Mehdi Sadiqi. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for thanks for joining. Uh, today, I'm going to present this paper on uh, reinforced active learning for image segmentation. And uh, as uh, as you probably already know, image segmentation is a challenging task. In, in particular, there are two main uh, challenges for image segmentation. Uh, the first one is that um, acquiring pixel-wise labels is uh, expensive. And the second one is that uh, real-world segmentation data is uh, highly uh, imbalanced, which biases the performance towards the most uh, represented categories. So uh, what do we need to do? What, what's required to do? Uh, but we need to minimize human labeling effort uh, and at the same time maximize performance of a segmentation model. Uh, in other words, we need to focus human labeling effort to small subset um, of the data. So uh, before going into the details of this approach, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, to take a look at this this approach in action uh, with a simple example. Here, as you can see, instead of using the entire image, uh, the proposed approach is going to focus on small objects and on the represented classes, such as, uh, for example, bicycles, people, like poles, and traffic lights, uh, instead of instead of road, for example. So as you can see that the focus is on like, uh, uh, like underrepresented classes. And uh, so how are we going to achieve this? Uh, this is done by effectively employing a deep reinforcement learning and learning, um, basically learning an optimum policy to select a small and uh, informative uh, image regions uh, to be labeled from a pool of unlabeled data. Um, it's also worth mentioning that this approach is different from other existing ones uh, in the task it addresses. And uh, the way it defines the states, actions, and rewards, uh, which is quite challenging, uh, and using reinforcement learning to find uh, an optimum policy. So, uh, since this presentation is mostly about like deep reinforcement learning, uh, I thought maybe uh, it's not a bad idea to give a high level refresher on uh, reinforcement learning terminology and concepts uh, in order to better understand what's coming next in the following slides. So in, in reinforcement learning, uh, we have an agent interacting with an environment by performing actions, then observing the environment uh, and recording, uh, recording it as a state. Um, and for each state, we're getting rewards at each step of uh, basically of these interactions. And uh, in order to formulate a problem as a uh, reinforcement learning problem, these actions, the states, and actions and states need to be encoded in a meaningful, useful way. And after defining the states and actions, we need to find an optimum policy telling us what's the best action to take. Um, for, for any given state. So, uh, and what do we mean by taking the best action? Uh, how is this defined? Uh, we already said uh, when we take an action, there is an associated reward with it. Uh, and in this sense, taking the best action uh, is defined as the action that maximizes some of future rewards. Um, in, in simple terms, uh, the goal is successful uh, long-term planning. And, and to find an optimum policy or finding the best actions, uh, there are algorithms such as like, if you're familiar with uh, like uh, reinforcement learning, there are algorithms such as like Q-learning, value iterations, and uh, also like deep Q-learning, uh, which uh, like th their details are beyond the scope of this uh, presentation. Uh, before going into the details of this uh, methodology, uh, we, we need to also understand the, the advantages uh, at the same time appreciate the difficulties of adaptation of uh, reinforcement learning for this particular problem. And the main challenge of this adaptation are, um, uh, are that uh, 
uh, due to large scale nature of this problem, states, actions and rewards need to be efficiently defined. And uh, the deep Q learning or DQN or deep query network formulation needs to be adapted uh, to be computationally uh, feasible for this problem. So back to the main paper. Uh, for, for this approach, uh, for this approach to work, data is required to be split in four different parts now uh, used for different components of this uh, algorithm. The first one is uh, D subscript T. Uh, that is a subset of label data set, um, a label data uh, used for active learning to learn a good acquisition function or basically to learn an optimum policy. Uh, the second one is D subscript V. Uh, that is used for evaluating the query network. And um, another data split is the subscript R is basically used to obtain the reward signal by um, evaluating the segmentation network on it. And finally, the subscript S is used to construct the state representations as, uh, and we will, we will discuss this and it, this will be explained in the following slides. And uh, as we said uh, before, uh, for the RF uh, reinforcement learning formulation, we need a representation for our states and actions. And to better understand how to encode our states and actions, we should understand their uh, dependencies. Uh, so state um, uh, is a function of the segmentation network. Uh, a time state uh, segmentation network uh, F, we call it uh, net network F, a time step T, um, but uh, an action is also a function um, the of the segmentation network, the labeled data set and the unlabeled data set. And we will understand this uh, better when we examine how an action uh, is used in the, in the whole uh, process. And uh, uh, one important point here is that we, we cannot just use the pixel level predictions uh, for, for a particular image or region as our states due to their like intensive memory usage. And for this reason, we need, uh, we need to be uh, like smart and we need a more compact representation. And in order to achieve this, uh, two sets of features were introduced. Uh, the first one is the uh, normalized count of the number of pixels uh, predicted for each category uh, while ignoring the spatial information. The second one is a spatial entropy map that first computes the entropy of each pixel location, uh, then applies uh, mean, average, uh, and max poolings to the entropy map, followed by flattening and concatenating them. And uh, we, we can uh, understand this better by looking at this image. Uh, so the if you look at this uh, particular image there, uh, we, here we are trying to create a set of presentations. And as we can see here, the bottom part, uh, the image at the bottom is actually uh, the one with, uh, with the red pixels in it. Uh, uses pixel predictions uh, to create one set of features. And the top part uses like prediction probabilities and just creating like uh, uh, entropy features and then concatenates them uh, all, both this uh, set of features to create a compact uh, state representations, as you can see on the right hand side of this slide. So, uh, as for the uh, action representation, uh, four sets of features are designed. Uh, the first two, uh, the first two features are similar to the state features. In, uh, in other words, normalized count of the number of pixels predicted for each category, and also entropy features shown uh, in the previous slide. And the other two are actually um, uh, measures of similarities between uh, a given region X, K, uh, and the labeled set and unlabeled set, which is uh, usually, which is at this paper, it's, uh, uh, it's calculated using KL divergences. And uh, as you can see in this image, this four set of features are concatenated together. So basically entropy features like pixel predictions and uh, like KL divergences between a region and labeled set and unlabeled set to create one uh, compact representation for, for given action. So, uh, 
after defining our states and action, the risk is actually a standard uh, reinforcement learning algorithm just adapted for this particular problem. Uh, that I'll explain here in, in just uh, in a very high level. Uh, so first, uh, a state is computed using uh, the subscript S data set that we introduced before and the segmentation network. So DS and segmentation network for defining uh, for a state representation. After that, a restricted action space is built from a pool of regions. We are not using the entire image. We are just uh, selecting from a pool of like regions selected from a, a full images. Uh, these are sampled uniformly from unlabeled set U subscript T. And then every sub action representation uh, is computed um, as explained before. Um, if you're familiar with reinforcement um, learning, you already know about like uh, you're familiar with epsilon greedy policy and uh, algorithm, uh, which is what is used uh, here to select k uh, sub actions. And each sub action is actually just choosing one particular region. And um, and then each sub action is just uh, as I said, it's just a region asking uh, to be like labeled or annotated. Uh, well, th these regions will then be labeled by an oracle uh, and the labeled and unlabeled set sets are updated accordingly. And the segmentation network is, uh, is then trained one iteration on these uh, recently added regions selected by that sub, sub, uh, particular sub-action. Uh, after this, using the data split uh, the R that we uh, introduced before, a reward is calculated as as the, just a, this, the reward is just a difference of performance of the segmentation network between this particular time step and the previous one. So as I said, uh, if you're familiar with reinforcement learning, this is pretty much a basic reinforcement learning algorithm. And it, this is just uh, like one particular adaptation for this particular problem. And uh, as uh, as part of the deep query network or deep Q learning formulation, we also need to compute like a Q values uh, with, uh, with the architecture you can see in this particular image. Uh, the details are like beyond the scope of this presentation, but uh, at a very high level, it's just comprised of like two separate paths for a state and action features uh, that, are, uh, uh, that are fused together at the end uh, with several layers uh, containing like batch normalization, relay activation, these are pretty standard layers. And they, these are fused together at the end to create like global features. And these are gated with a like sigmoid control with like KL divergence, uh, divergences that are used in the action representation. So, uh, this is pretty much uh, like a very general, like high level uh, introduction of the method. Uh, but um, uh, let's talk about like the more interesting part of like uh, how it's actually working on, in, uh, in reality on real data sets. So uh, this is the experimental results. Uh, so uh, to, to test this approach, actually the paper uh, have have tested this approach on two data sets. Uh, the two data sets are experimented like CanRead and Cityscapes. Both these data sets are street scene view images with different resolutions, number of categories, and uh, the data splits as you can see in this, uh, like these two slides. And uh, an important uh, difference between these uh, two experimental settings uh, that we should notice is that for CanRead, 24 regions uh, are selected at each step, uh, while for uh, city escapes, 256 regions are uh, used for uh, at each step. And these numbers are the optimum number of regions selected, um, the, the optimum number of regions selected experimentally for each uh, data set. And to further measure the performance of this approach, uh, three baselines are compared with it. Uh, the first one is the uniform sampling that uh, we're going to show with you from this point on. The uncertainty, uh, uncertainty sampling using like uh, maximum cumulative pixel-wise um, Shannon entropy. 
which is shown with H uh, from this point on, and maximum accumulative pixel-wise BALD or BALD, which is shown uh, with B uh, in the next slide. And we, we can see some examples of these different samplings here. Uh, as mentioned before, the, the proposed approach of this uh, paper is biased towards uh, sampling uh, underrepresented and small objects. The other two approaches that we uh, mentioned in the previous slide, like uh, the, the Shannon entropy and like pixel-wise uh, uh sampling, they also achieve this to some extent, but they are not as effective as the proposed approach in this paper. Uh, these are some experimental results and we're going to like uh, discuss them uh, some uh, for, for both these data sets, Canvids and city escapes. Uh, in the case of Canvid, the proposed approach performs better than all um, three baselines, uh, except for when the entropy sampling uses a big uh, budget of like uh, 1.5k, 1500 uh, regions. So basically outperforms like uh, the other sampling approaches. And as for the city escapes, the RL approach, uh, the proposed approach always performs better than all the uh, other baselines. And it's um, closest competitor, the, the entropy sampling uh, needs an additional 6K labeled regions to be of the same performance of this proposed approach. And uh, the one interesting property, um, that we should notice is that uh, the, the, this, this uh, RL method, it, it, it works especially well for uh, underrepresented classes such as like people, motorcycles, bicycles, and so on. And the, the reason this is happening is that uh, the intuition behind this is that it's mainly because this approach optimizes for the uh, mean intersection over union. Uh, for for each category and defines basically defines class of representations for states and actions. And finally, uh, we're also interested in learning more about the robustness of this approach to its components. Uh, we, are, we are in particular interested in knowing more about the influence of the state and action representations and a number of selected regions per step. Uh, on its performance, which this is uh, achieved by conducting an ablation uh, study. So uh, as the first part um, of the ablation study, the, the incremental effect of state and uh, action representations are experimented. So we remember from previous slides that we used pooling in uh, both state and action representation and also KL divergences in action representation. So as, as a result, the three polling operations, minimum, maximum, and average, and the KL divergences are, are the main components of this uh, part of the study. Uh, so as we can see in this table, by, by only using um, uh, max polling shown, shown in this table by row, uh, hours dash one edge, uh, we are actually doing worse than the entropy sampling approach. Uh, but, by, by, but by adding the other two pollings, uh, which is shown by uh, row hours dash three edge in this table, uh, we will surpass the entropy sampling. Uh, and, and finally, by adding the KL divergences to the action representations, uh, that is shown by the last row, uh, R-3H plus KL, uh, will further improve the per uh, performance. And basically this shows the importance of a state and action representations in the way that described in previous slides. And as another part of the, uh, the ablation study, uh, to, to measure the sensitivity of this method to the number of regions uh, selected per step, several experiments were also conducted. Uh, the table at the bottom right uh, shows the experimental results with varying number of regions, which just illustrates the fact that this approach is quite robust to the number of um, uh, regions. We don't see much variance in the performance. And um, now, uh, the, the best number in this table, this is uh, Canvid data, the best number in this table is uh, uh, 24. 
And this is used for the other part of the experiment uh, that you can see uh, the results at the, uh, at the, uh, in the table at the top, uh, which basically uh, com compared the, uh, like, compared different sampling strategy strategies with, like, uh, with different, with 24 regions and also the, the full image. So the top table shows that the RL approach performs better than using a full image and uh, also performs better than using other sampling strategies. And we should also notice that all the baselines and the RL approach show similar performance when using a full image instead of uh, uh, like a small regions. So uh, in conclusion, so th this approach presents a solution to eliminate the need for manual pixel level labeling. And it achieves this goal through a new uh, uh, DQM formulation, uh, deep uh, Q learning formulation, for learning an effective acquisition function, which enables us to get the same uh, performance of like uh, competitive baselines, but using less labeled data. Uh, and finally, to intuitively understand why why this works uh, well, we should pay att attention to these three important factors. The fact that um, it, this approach is asking for more labels of underrepresented classes. The fact that it directly optimizes for per class mean uh, intersection over unions. And finally, uh, the definition of class ever representations for states and actions uh, contributes substantially to the success of this approach. And uh, that's the end of the presentation. And uh, thanks for listening and I'm ready for your questions. Hi, uh, uh, hi Mehdi, thank you for the wonderful presentation. This is Amit here. I just wanted to know uh, from the reward perspective, uh, since most of the images would be the first time the model sees, how do you have a reference image for creating a reward? Um, so, I yeah, yeah I, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to understand what the question is. So, the, um, as I said that, yeah, the, the rewards are created. So when you have like, when you select a, 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 like, as I said, for example, 24 regions, you you train your network for those particular regions, and then you you get like uh, a mean IAU performance for that particular network. So what what the, what what is your question exactly? So now, if you have a new image coming in for segmentation, so the process has to be done for every image. You need to have. Uh, some subsamples of image which uh, the rewards are being estimated or you just estimate the reward for say 100 images and uh, once you see the unknown image, uh, the rewards are generated. No, as I said, the, so the rewards is just like basically uniformly sample from a pool of regions of unlabeled regions and basically the rewards just like the difference in performance between uh, for this particular set than the previous one. So it's not like that you have to do it for every image uh, separately. It, it just sampled uniformly from, from a pool of regions. So it's a, it's a random reward from the pool of images. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you.